Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we examine headlines from our city, our state, and our country. We combine them with knowledge and suggestions and information that we share with one another so that we can enjoy a more fulfilling, more uh, immersive life here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. It is always a pleasure to get together with you. And today, July 6, I'm feeling very feisty between my connectivity woes with internet and Telmex and Telcel and this, that, and the other, and the address that we received yesterday from our governor. I am feeling pretty fucking feisty. Pardon the French. So what's going to happen today is we're going to have a lot of news. We have a lot of things to unpack. As always, I'd like to tell you that if you are new to our broadcasts, we appreciate if you let us know that you're new. You can do that by writing the word new in your comments, and that way we can give you a nice little welcome. If you have anything important that you wish to share during the broadcast, we ask that you kindly um add the letter Q to your comment so that we can make sure we don't miss it. As always, we'll go through the news very swiftly, very quickly, and we'll get in a more chit-chatty uh, mode um, in the second half of the broadcast. Although I can't help but to acknowledge Tomas Pollito Flannery, who says I'm fierce and feisty. Um, it was such a pleasure to meet you a couple of days ago, friend. Um, I will gladly acknowledge other comments later on. But again, we have a lot to unpack today, so we might as well dive in. Jalisco Governor Enrique Alfaro finally addressed our state the state of Jalisco, with important information regarding the uptick in COVID-19 cases registered in the last month through a Facebook video that was posted on his Facebook page yesterday. I watched the whole thing and extracted 22, 22 important takeaways that I'd like to share with you first and foremost. This will take some time. This will involve some reading, but I do believe all the information is essential. For starters, Governor Alfaro, let me just switch over something here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Number one, um, Governor Alfaro acknowledged finally the increase in cases and, um, and increasing numbers of hospitalizations. Governor Alfaro told us that the active cases increased by 62% in our state within the last month from 776 to 1,264 hospitalization increased by 17 percent and positivity that is the people that go and get tested through the official um uh testing sites that the government of our state puts forth positivity went over five percent after several months of being under five percent this means that for several months out of 100 people that got tested less than 5% or less than 5 people were getting tested, and now that number has gone up slightly. 
over 5%, just slightly, but enough to raise concerns. Um, Governor Alfaro reminded us that the risk is not over because Jalisco, our state, only has an immunity level of 42%, either from vaccinated people or from people that contracted COVID-19 and recovered. Over half of the population has not gotten vaccinated and is at high risk of getting infected. Something else that we learned yesterday is that the Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus is in Jalisco. Um, we've been reading a lot about the Delta variant in other news outlets, and it is estimated now that 60% of world COVID cases have to do with this particular variant because Delta variant is four times more contagious than the others. Um, Governor Alfaro also emphasized the fact that people need to get vaccinated. We got, sh we felt shocked when we saw how little a turnout we had here in Puerto Vallarta, for example, when vaccination was open to folks in their 40s. Well, it turns out that, for example, in the entire state, when vaccination was made available for folks in their 50s, only 50% 50 of the population in the state that is in their 50s went out and got vaccinated. So it is absolutely important that people get vaccinated when the vaccination campaigns are announced. Um, he emphasized the effectiveness of the vaccine has been demonstrated, but it means very little if people don't go out and get vaccinated. Uh, so what's going to happen is Governor Alfaro is going to meet with Mexico President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador today to discuss the possibility of targeted vaccine distributions in places where it is truly needed. Chances are that we don't appreciate this here in Puerto Vallarta, but there have to be a lot of little towns, little places in the middle of nowhere where people simply don't have the means to get to the cities or the places where vaccination is taking place. And I suspect this has a lot to do with the fact that not everybody is getting vaccinated when they should be. Uh, Governor Alfaro also said that the number of COVID tests is going to be increased so that we can accomplish better tracing. Um, and of course, he said that the message will be reinforced among, reinforced among the young population because this is the demographic that is now contracting the virus. And this has been demonstrated through numbers in the state. It is the younger folk that are getting sick, increasingly so with COVID. So if you have symptoms, you go get tested, plain and simple. I mean, if we could just impart that on the population, that would make such a big difference. The use of a face mask is the difference between life and death, said Governor Alfaro. We have to go back and stick to the basic sanitary protocols that are already set in place. Food for thought. Some of us never stop observing the sanitary protocols, if I may say so. But it is unfortunate that many people just started not giving that much of a damn about them. We are still on time to not have to apply any further restrictions, said Governor Alfaro. But we do have to abide by what is going on right now. So a special emergency meeting will take place today with business representatives of bar and nightlife venues in the state because this is where the problem resides. And again, this has been demonstrated through numbers, apparently. Uh, this meeting will include the mayors of all municipalities. I say that again, the problem resides with bars and nightlife because they have chosen to turn a blind eye and not follow the guidelines. Any business that doesn't comply will be shut down definitely starting this weekend. We cannot allow local authorities and business owners to turn a blind eye on the situation. Plain and simple, or at least that's what he said is going to happen. COVID apparently is not really happening at schools or at work, as we may have suspected. It is happening at nightlife venues where people go to have fun and they remove their face mask. Measures will be particularly reinforced in vacation destinations such as Puerto Vallarta. And for the first time, Mayor Alfaro, I mean, Governor Alfaro mentioned our city a number of times during the address, making a point. One year ago this month, Puerto Vallarta received 445 flights from Mexico and other countries. Now Puerto Vallarta is receiving 7,400 monthly flights. And this explains why cases are increasing here and in other vacation destinations in the States and more so than in the rest of the state of Jalisco. 
In short, we are still at a time in which no new restrictions or measures need to be implemented, but current guidelines will be reinforced. We don't want to introduce further restrictions, said the governor, but if people do not do their part, we will not let the situ um, uh, we, we will not let the situation get out of control. Um, so the governor has been very clear what happens today and the basic principle of the strategy in Jalisco has been to take preventive measures uh, and avoid things that have happened in other states such as Quintana Roo, Yucatan or Baja California. Now, the good news is that even if all of this sounds really alarming, I mean, we're definitely not anywhere near where we were a few months ago, a few, you know, when, when, when um, the numbers were a lot higher and the hospitalizations were way, way, way higher um, in the thousands and so forth and so on. But the governor is not going to let um, his approach of being preventive uh, get in the way, or so he claims. So let us hope that that is indeed the case, that the governor will meet with the uh, bar and nightlife business sector, and uh, and that he will meet the, with the mayors of the different municipalities because nothing that the governor says means shit if we don't do anything about it or if the proper authorities and business owners don't do anything about it. So I am feeling fierce about this. And um, again, if you have been uh, out and about not wearing uh, your face mask, not following the guidelines, well, fucking shame on you, you know? And if you are a bar owner and you have been turning a blind eye at the fact that this is still happening and you have been allowing more people in your venue uh, than than uh, allowed, and if you're allowing them to sit around without a face mask, well, fucking shame on you. So, ah, I feel better already just for sharing that with you. And now we continue with our headlines. Yesterday, we also learned that the first case of the COVID-19 Delta variant in Jalisco was registered back on April 18, when a 33-year-old male from Nagpur, India, arrived in Zapopa, which is a municipality just outside of Guadalajara. I mention this only because we want to make sure that you understand that the Delta variant didn't just just arrive in Jalisco overnight. It's been around for some time, and this confirms some of the, or supports some of the statements made by Governor Alfaro. If the variant has been already here, um, you know, and it's four times more contagious than the other variants, then it is no surprise that this is happening. Moving right along, as reported yesterday, vaccination for folks in their 30s began this morning in Puerto Vallarta at La Lija in the Navy Hospital from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. until this coming Friday. Now, many folks in their 40s and 50s are wondering if this is also going to include their age groups. Unfortunately, the information is inconclusive at this time, but this is made worse because the news sources published this official image that says that you can go get vaccinated if you are over 30. It doesn't say in your 30s. It says over 30, which to me reads as though anyone is welcome. So we have several friends in their 30s that are getting vaccinated today and will We've charged them with the task to get clarity on this matter. If we're lucky, folks in their 50s and, and 40s and 50s will also be able to get the vaccine this week. But this is yet to be confirmed. And I think it'll become a lot clearer by tomorrow when some people ask around, hey, are you letting people that are older get vaccinated or not? Now, this one is this one pissed me off. This is just plain disgusting. The Miss Mexico beauty pageant took place on... Can you tell I'm pissed? <laughs> the Miss Mexico beauty pageant took place on July 1st in the city of Chihuahua, and it has come to light that there were active COVID cases within the organization such that 17 people, of which 15 were contestants, are infected. To make matters worse, the Secretary of Health revealed that they received an anonymous tip the day before, the day before the competition, um, revealing that there were people with COVID within the organization. And yet the organizers went ahead with the competition. And to make matters worse, 
Some of the contestants had been making community public appearances in the days prior to the competition in various points in the city with contact to the public. The Miss Mexico organization has yet to comment on this very unpleasant situation. <laughs> and now, um, let us turn over to the weather just to see if we're going to have meteorites or horrible things falling upon us to make everything else just more splendid this week. Does the sun really think he can hide? We see you behind those clouds, stupid star. <laughs> That's what our uh, snarky carrot weather has to say today. Um, our temperature today is 28 degrees. It feels like 36. Uh, wow, it's 28 and it feels like 36. That's really, well, no, it's understandable. Humidity is at 97%. It's 83 degrees Fahrenheit. There is very little chance of rain and our weather forecast for today calls for a humid and mostly cloudy day throughout the day uh, with a high temperature of 31, low temperature of 24. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, we will expect possible light rain in the evening High temperature of 30, low temperature of 23. And on Thursday, possible light rain in the evening uh, with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 23. Damn, that's what we see. That's what we have. Moving right along, let me get my screens in order. Moving right along, I'd like to clarify something that I told you yesterday. Yesterday, I told you that Vallarta Opina had published a note about the El Salto waterfalls here in Puerto Vallarta without showing them on their article, and I was wrong. The actual waterfall was covered by their own heading, their own title. So here is the photograph that, public, that was published yesterday by Vallarta Opina, and there are the beautiful waterfalls of uh, El Salto behind the neighborhood of Agua Azul, um, don't try getting up there unless you are a fabulous jock in perfect um, health condition and you're willing to climb through wet roads and muddy paths and so forth and so on. Ah, breathe, Paco, breathe. A crocodile was captured inside a hotel in Punta de Mita. Nice. This happened within the facilities of the Swanky, and I saw photographs, and it is Swanky, Marival Armony. Um, resort, Harmony, without an H, Harmony. Environmental authorities came and fetched the female specimen to take her to a safer place. And please don't frown upon the poor reptiles. They were here long, long, long before we started developing all over the freaking place. Uh, this next one has nothing to do with Puerto Vallarta, but I was somewhat tickled when I saw this video of a cyclist climbing on top of a car that was invading the bicycle lane in the city of Querétaro. I say good for her and the rest of the cyclists that were annoyed as well over the lack of respect displayed by motor vehicle drivers. If you want to watch the video, you'll find it in the link in the show notes that we will publish as always right after the broadcast. And now we enter the politically and culturally incorrect portion of the program and that ha this happens in several sections. First of all, I need to thank you guys for making me think about the things that come out of my mouth. Yesterday, we talked about Mexicution, and somebody uh, mentioned, rightly so, that insisting on calling Mexicution a Mexicution is as bad as reinforcing the notion of Mexican time and all these cultural and racials and racial phrases that come out of our mouths without thinking about it. And, and of course, you got me thinking, and of course, you're right. And moving forward, we will not mention Mexicution as such in the program anymore. We will simply call it culture shock. It is real, you know? It is even real for us Mexicans. I'm going through a fabulous case of culture shock because I'm having to endure the trials and tribulations that one has to go through when getting your phone line back in order. Uh, but we will not call it Mexicution anymore. We will call it culture shock. Unless you guys can think of a better, more inclusive, less offensive phrase, which I'm happy to entertain. But I thought about this a long time yesterday, and the best thing that I could come up with was um, culture shock. But there's more to this. There's more to this because yesterday I found this headline of so-called white sickens. 
quite seconds. Get this. Infuriating folks because they were captured photographing a child beggar in the city of Guadalajara. Um, so I'm not um, familiar with the term white seconds. And I figured, oh, my God, what is this about? I need to go and read more about the situation. And boy, was I in for a treat. Now, everything I'm going to show you moving forward in this section of the program is neither right or wrong. I share it with you only because I think it is culturally relevant. Um, when I read the article about the white sickens, it made reference to a Twitter page, uh, and that's where the, the, the information first appeared. So I went and found this or checked out this page, this Twitter page called Cosas de White Sicans, or in English, it would be on the matter of white sickens. The page bills itself as a page that offers dark humor about white people, but it's not about the white people many of you may be thinking as we use the term. This is about the very real divide between cultural divide between upper classes in Mexico or white Mexicans and lower classes in Mexico or indigenous uncultured people. This is very real. This is about the very ugly things that come out of upper class Mexican mouths or thoughts or actions. So I went and looked at, at what's on this page and it is brutal. It is brutally true. It is politically incorrect. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, because it's in Spanish, of course. This one, this note here says, we couldn't have thought of a better photo for this particular Twitter account. This is some kind of gathering in a Mexican city where uh, an allegedly white Mexican is wearing an American flag. The next one here is somebody posted a screenshot of uh, um, a post that says, I want an iced vanilla vanilla oatmeal latte and i write it in english because i don't know how to ask for it in spanish that is just nasty uh let's see. and here's the post about the little um the little uh boy that was singing in the plaza in in, in guadalajara and people were offended i mean that that uh, that these so-called white Mexicans would photograph the kid as if he was some kind of curiosity or novelty and so forth and so on. The page just continues um, displaying the sad or very real divide between upper and lower classes in Mexico. The closest equivalent I can think of to this very nasty and very entertaining page, depending on where you sit, the only point of reference that I can think of that you might be able to relate to is People of Walmart. I don't know if you've ever visited peopleofwalmart.com, but peopleofwalmart.com explores the lovely creatures and situations that apparently take place in this beautiful store north of the border. It is brutal. They even have a section on their website called Hate Mail where they share, well, the hate mail they receive. So again, this is not for you to approve or disapprove or laugh or frown. It's simply meant to provide context to the cultural and socioeconomic divide here in Mexico, which is very, very real. Please don't go out um, using white sicken uh, out there. And, uh, and Sherry asks, I am confused what a white Mexican is. Geez, Sherry, I believe I just explained myself. If I didn't explain myself clearly, let me help you understand. Mexico was conquered by Spaniards. Spaniards came from Europe. These Europeans were white. They came here and found themselves surrounded by a bunch of Indians. They thought the Indians were stupid and they proceeded to suppress or oppress the voice of these uh, indigenous dark-skinned Mexicans. And this has been going on forever. So that is what white Mexicans are about. White Mexicans are people that feel they are better because they are upper class, because their skin is lighter. And, um, and it's a very sad reality. Why do I constantly talk about being kind to grocery bag, uh, grocery baggers, um, because I don't believe in that 
in that class divide or racial divide? Why do we constantly talk about being kind to the service people that clean our homes? Same reason. So I hope that explains uh, what we're talking about here. Um, and, uh, and that's that. And now, <clears throat> before we get into our comments, uh, we are going to go into Taco Tuesday because guess what? Despite all this stuff, we have some yummy things to share today. And this would be, of course, Taco Tuesday. Yesterday, I ended up going to, uh, well, first of all, I had to wait all day long for uh, Telmex to show up or fix my things. And of course, Telmex didn't uh, do that. So I went to a last resort taco place, which happened to be very near my house. And I'm mindful of the fact that a lot of the taco places that we visited are either in Versailles or surrounding areas, but they're still providing an opportunity for you guys to get out of the places that you're comfortable with. So there, we went to Taco Saguayo, which is a wonderful taco place located in La Vena, just two blocks away from my house and less than one block away from Francisco Villa Street. We'll put them on the map later on today. And this is an outdoor alfresco taco place that is neither a taco stand because you can sit down, but it is not a restaurant because you don't have a table. There are a lot of taco places like this where you order your stuff and you get to eat it while you're sitting down, but there's no table. So whatever things you're carrying, your chingaderas and stuff like that, you have to... Um, you have to hold your plate with your hand and therefore in eat your food and enjoy it. Now, this place is really wonderful because, again, it's very busy. They had a, a huge trompo de pastor, pastor tacos, which seems to be their piece of resistance. And they have a very basic menu, but this is printed very basically, of what they have for you to order. And, of course, they have all the basic stuff that we've come to love and enjoy of a taco stand or a small taco eatery uh, of particular delight was watching the in, watching the taco um, person. Uh, oh my God, did we just get hit with major spam? Yes, we did. Uh, we are not kind-hearted Nigerians, so please disregard that, please, 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 and I'll delete it later on. Anyhow, the, 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 the taco guy was just brutally amazing to watch. You see what they do. Let me get out of this for a second. Is They're putting the meat in the tacos, and then they have the grilled pineapple up here, and they slice the grilled pineapple with, imagine that, that I am the grilled pineapple. So they slice it, and down here is their taco on a plate or on their hand, and the pieces of, of of pineapple land on the taco while the taco maker is not even looking. He's like looking up, chop, chop, chop. And meanwhile, his hand is down here. He was just brutally amazing to watch. It was just, it was just gorgeous to see him do what he was doing. And one of the things that I've that that um, caught my attention on this particular situation, on this particular taco place, is that they must be so good that, well, they are good. I had eaten there before. But while I was sitting there enjoying my tacos al pastor, two separate vans with very north of the border looking tourists came with said tourists to enjoy the tacos at this particular place. So this is Taco Saguayo. It is a couple of blocks away from my house. And we will be adding them to the taco map so that you can enjoy it. And I'm so very, very glad that I went there because while I was there, I also noticed that a brand new sushi place has just opened next door to them less than three months ago. And you know how we feel about helping out new restaurants. So we're going to go check out this place called Omakase. They have a Facebook page. We're going to go check them out. And we will add them to our Versailles for Foodies uh, map and guide. So with all that said and done, we are done with the news. And now we can go ahead and read um, all your comments. Today, we're sailing thanks to Telcel. Um, again, I'm hoping that I'm not going over my bandwidth, which is something that I need to go and explore today, along with a visit to the Telmex at Plaza Caracol. Oh, what a beautiful day. And of course, we have to walk for tomorrow. So it's going to be a busy day today. 
Let's see. Um, ah, da -da 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 -da. We have a lot of good mornings from Rita from the Pocono Mountains. Uh, thank you very much. Glee Audrey says hello. A mazel tov to Mary, who's here on time, and she calls it a miracle. Um, glorious day in El Centro, says Jill. This is all beautiful, and there are many more uh, good mornings that I'm going to skip for the sake of brevity, but again, it is always a pleasure to read you every single morning. Marsha, I am exactly on your side. This is a very nice group to look forward to in the morning. I very much look forward to getting together with you every single day except for sundays um let's see what else we have oh sharon you are absolutely correct the sunsets have been beautiful this this last few days i don't actually get to see the sunset per se from my apartment but i get to see the beautiful clouds that follow um are you being affected yet by hurricane I have to, oh, that must be for Jorge Mendez because we don't have hurricane here in Puerto Vallarta as of right now. Uh, yes, it was for Jorge Mendez. I'm glad that Jorge, you are not getting affected from whatever tropical storm Elsa is doing. Um, Stephanie, you are absolutely correct. It's quite possible that in rural areas of Jalisco, there's just not enough communication about the vaccines. You know, we must remember, I mean, we are of a certain kind of citizen or resident that pays attention to the news and pays attention to what's going on. We should not ever think for a second that the rest of the population is like that. You know, they they don't read the paper and there are no papers to be read in small rural towns. Um, they don't watch the news because they're busy, you know, WhatsApping and Facebooking or what do I know? But yes, you're right. It is very, very, very true. Um, why doesn't Mexico require that travelers coming to our country have to provide a negative COVID text? I know, I know it could hurt our income, but it would also potentially help stop the spread of this virus. That is an excellent question, Linda. You'd have to ask that to the president of our country because he is the one that makes that decision. But it is a very good question. Uh, Sherry asks, our hotels require masks when people enter. Um, by the book, you are supposed to wear a mask when you enter any business in Mexico by the book. Uh, let's see. Leanne Hamilton loves my comments on, sh on COVID. Shame on them. Absolutely, fucking lutely Shame on them. Uh, let's see. Oh my God, Christy, I forgot about your babies. Arr! I got so caught up with the announcement, but I will share Christy's new raccoons tomorrow i promise i promise um last week when we had lunch at a hotel in the hotel zone do not want to mention name we were our mask staff as well hotel guests no i am not surprised i am not surprised i am not surprised i mean the number of businesses in our city that are just turning the blind eye and thinking oh oops it's, it's okay don't no no don't get me started uh let's see dave says the mandate should be still be in place but the mandate seems to only be like a suggestion based on compliance as one walks around town again don't make me start it i love this it's mexican ventilator and it is sad it is absolutely sad uh thank you for this rita i am waiting to get my second vaccine in fact i have our friends are looking into our friends in their 30s are going to find out if this campaign is only for people in their 30s and if it is for people in their 30s and 40s and 50s we are already planning a couple of friends and i to go get vaccinated tomorrow for our second shot we are all in our 50s and we want to take care of this um let's see my friend paco moras who is now working with um, vallarta tribune which has a new name is in the house paco it was so great to see you the other day and it is great to know that you are doing good work for the community, yay. Um, let's see what else. We're all, uh, some friends in their 30s posted pics this morning getting their vaccine, was also told that 18 plus can register now. I have not checked the official website, nor have I seen news 
that registration is open to folks on their eight, on their teens or 18 plus. Um, but again, it wouldn't be the first time it happened yesterday when important news are published while we are broadcasting. So I'll keep an eye on this. Thank you very much for your comment, Gary. Um, let's see. Let's see. I am very spunky today, Leanne, and I'm in, and I hope, you know, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, some days I just, ah, because, and, and it's so frustrating because there's only so much one can do, you know, from where I sit, all I can do is share empathy and kindness and patience with, with whoever I come in contact with. And I think, I hope that we are all doing the same thing. But the bottom line is that this sad reality is not in our personal hands more often than not. Unless, unless we are business owners and we're turning a blind eye, unless we're out there not wearing our masks, or unless we are not kindly nudging our friends and visiting friends into wearing their masks and following the local guidelines. Uh, let's see. Ha! I been to Heather. I love it. Mexico, the land of magical thinking. If we don't talk about COVID-19, it just doesn't exist. Ah, <laughs> that is so fucking accurate. It's not even funny. Um, ma, 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 ma. Uh, which babies, Angelica asks, well, I got um, a beautiful set of photographs from Christy. Uh, of the baby, the latest batch of baby raccoons that she's nursing. And again, I am going to share this um, hopefully tomorrow, I call it, definitely. Um, let's see what else. That is sad someone would take a picture of a child like that. Well, yes, yes. Bureauc oh, now we get into the, into the, into the, Culture shock, bureaucratic nightmare that crosses other cultures. Um, let's see what else. Yes, shitty service and being stuck in the manner things are done just because that's how things are always done. Precisely, that's what we're talking about. We're, we're not calling it the M word anymore. Um, let's see what else. Colorism is very real and I have witnesses at every opportunity and, and at every opportunity corrected it. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I photograph street performers all the time, young or old, indigenous or foreigners. I don't see why this should be an issue. The topic of street photography, uh, for better or worse, is a heated topic among photographers, Brett. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. Um, there, I think there are instances in which it's okay to do it. There are instances in which it's probably not okay to do it. I myself am guilty of many times just photographing sexy dudes out on the street. Uh, and I don't, I don't feel as good about doing that as I used to in general. And more often than not, I always try to say to people, can I take your photograph? Uh, but that's just me. It is, it is complicated. Uh, is it possible to get your second shot during this current rollout for 30 plus? I think I'll have an answer for that tomorrow, Rita, when my our friends that are spying or gathering information today let us know whether they, they uh, the authorities are letting people in their 40s or 50s getting uh, to get the vaccine or not. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, thank you very much, Michael. This is important uh, to find out about rules with Minister of, of Labor regarding COVID-19. And they said that if inspectors visit any business, they follow the federal government rules and not the state rules. Since federal overrides all, one could face sanctions and fines. I will email you the 15-point checklist later. Thank you very much, Michael. I look forward to reading it because I'm sure it, reveal, it will reveal um, uh, important things. Um, I should say classism isn't just a thing here, but it definitely is. I think people, Kelly, forget that classism exists in Mexico. By people, I mean the English-speaking community. Because for the vast majority um, of cases, the English-speaking community, and I mean folks that live here that are from other countries, 
are ensconced in these neighborhoods where there are not many opportunities to witness firsthand the ugly divide between upper class Mexicans and lower class Mexicans. But you have to remember, Puerto Vallarta is a huge city, 350,000 or more citizens, I believe. And there are neighborhoods that are incredibly rich and neighborhoods that are incredibly poor. And it's when those interactions happen that things just, just get ugly. Um, let's see what else. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, generally, it is not the white Mexican that is the laborer. This is true. Um, oh, then we have the spam um, message. We will get rid of that as soon as we're done with the broadcast. Um, I see tourists photographing a street performer. Where are people seeing the classism in this? I just don't see it. The people that were taking the photograph looked white. The color of their skin looked white. The kid was clearly a poor, dark-skinned kid. It's in the photograph, uh, Brad. I don't think it gets any clearer than that. Uh, let's see what else. Da, 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 da. While this is extremely sad, hopefully some good and understanding will come from this. Thank you very much, Karen. And thank you very much because that's exactly the goal here. I am not putting up the website for people at, from, people at Walmart or that other website for you guys to develop naughty ideas on how to shame people for being a certain shape or a certain color. I put the information here for you to think or for us to think that the differences and the classism and the racism and the cultural divide is very real. Um, and yes, it is all over the world. And the, the only thing we can do is just be kind ourselves. Be kind ourselves. Um, <laughs> Matthew says, Miss COVID or our, Nuestra Belleza, our beauty, Mexico COVID. I, I, that whole situation is just so fucking weird and I can't wait for the organization to be chastised. Um, I see you guys are having a lovely conversation about people photography. Um, I'm going to let you to it, um, but just be kind with one another. Again, uh, I know that in professional photography circles, the conversation about uh, street photography it's what the photography term is the conversation about street photography and whether it's right or wrong legally or morally or culturally is very real all i can say is go about whatever you do with kindness and if you are a commercial photographer learn about what is expected to do uh let's see what else meanwhile dale is sitting at la isla and listening while waiting for an uber Good for you. I love that. Thank you very much, Dale. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, la, uh, uh. We are flying in from Wyoming on August 4th, and we are required to show vaccination or a COVID test. Good to know. Uh... This is a very good point. When taking photos of any locals or performers, you should be intelligent enough to tip them. That is why they are out there working. By the way, in case you ever wondered, whenever I show up at a taco place, I always say, hey, I'm, I'm doing a feature about this in my broadcast. Is it okay if I take photographs? Sometimes they just say yes. They never say no. Sometimes they ask questions. They want to know what it is about. And I always leave a very, very generous tip after the fact. Uh, let's see. Barbara just flew into Puerto Vallarta and was not asked to provide proof of anything, has never been asked to provide proof. There you have it. Uh, thank you very much for that information, Jamie. I will look for the, I will look for the, the news notes and I will certainly feature them tomorrow in, in the broadcast. I like spunky Eric. Hello, Eric Wichner. Our friend Eric is the owner of Bayarda Eats Food Tours. We love it when you show up, Eric. And we I certainly hope that things are going well with your business and that all your visitors are properly face masked. Because if I learn that, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know what to do. You know what to do. 
Uh, Terry says, welcome to Steve and Linda, who officially moved to Nuevo Vallarta yesterday. Welcome. Uh, uh, adults performing are one thing. In a in, in situation where children are obviously being exploited, um, I would not take photographs of children specifically without permission. I totally agree with that. And clearly, when I see a child in the middle of a plaza with his hand out expecting to get money, I know that there are adults behind him telling him to do that. And to me, that's exploitation. Uh, and that's just me. Um, let's see. Stephanie says, I take photos with the policia and Marina all the time. Ask them first, though. I do the same thing, especially when they're cute. Um, again, I think you guys are navigating a whole other stream of consciousness regarding street photography. Have fun and just be nice to one another. Uh, did I say the child was singing? I actually didn't say that out loud, but I did read somewhere that this child is known for singing on the street, and apparently he does it very well. He's been featured on television and stuff like that. Still, if he's being perched by his parents in the middle of the street at that age, and he looked really tiny. He looked to be no more than eight years of age. If his parents are putting him in the middle of a plaza to sing for money, I, uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I don't care how you put it. It's just not right for me. Uh, da, 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 da. I was appalled at the behavior of passengers flying from LAX to PVR, ignoring safety protocols and directions from flight attendants. We even had to return to the gate in a group of seven removed from the plane, not so flying from SCA to LAX. Was this something you experienced? Oh, I... Nothing commented there. Paco, we have totally disparate opinions of evidence of classism then. And that's perfectly fine, Brett. I mean, we're not here at, pa at Coffee and Headlines to agree on anything or everything. We're here to share information and talk about it. And we can certainly disagree on this, that, and the other. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, la -da -dee -da -da. I am almost ready to get to the end of today um, yes we are um, oh, okay so uh oh okay okay never mind yes if you guys are having big arguments about the street photography business please don't have them please don't have them or have them elsewhere um, Agree to disagree and move on. Okay? And this, my friends, brings us to the end of um, our broadcast today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope... Um, oh, in case you're a newbie, anyone else having large crabs visiting their yard? Well, this happens in some neighborhoods. Yes, you can expect to see water crabs visiting all over the place. I've seen them in certain parts of the bay, not everywhere. Get used to it. It's part of what happens here. Uh, this has been Coffee and Headlines for today, July 6th. I hope you were entertained, amused, informed, or otherwise given something to think about. If that is the case, remember, we don't happen for free. We happen because some of you contribute to our existence, and we appreciate that very much. If you would like to support by me, uh, uh, bleh, if you'd like to support Coffee and Headlines, you know where to go. You know what to do. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have an awesome day, and I'll keep you posted on my cultural shock.